Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to review all the videos published in January 2019. Let's begin. So January started off with a video covering 5 tips to make your first game in 2019. This is part of a new type of videos that I'm trying out, containing more general advice regarding game dev rather than specific tutorials. Following that, there was a video on 7 reasons why you should use Unity in 2019. I think Unity is great and there are plenty of reasons to be excited in the roadmap for this year. Then a video on 5 questions you should ask yourself when choosing your next game. These are some questions that will help you identify if a certain game idea is worth pursuing. And then I did a video with my own answers to these questions regarding Battle Royale Tycoon, so you can see my reasoning for choosing to make that game as well as the value of asking yourself those questions. Finally started a series on doing a complete simple game from start to finish. I chose Snake as the game to make, which is a great simple design that should be perfect for beginners to learn. This series starts at the Unity New Project window and will end with a completed game. I'm also putting out videos more frequently, so the entire series should be finished within a month. The first video covers starting a new project and setting up the main scene. So we set up the camera, the main scripts and install the utilities. The second video covers snake movement by listening to keyboard input and moving the snake along the grid. After that we set up a class to handle the level grid and spawn food while adding the ability for the snake to eat it. Then we made the snake grow in size when it eats some food. And finally we added proper sprites to the snake row code. This series will continue and be completed in February. We continued the series on modular sprite sheets as used for guests in Battle Royale Tycoon. Taking what we learned on how to tint pixels, we applied it to the guest skin color. This provides an interesting challenge since we don't want to tint the eyes, so we'll learn how to tint whilst using a mask. All that remains in this series is learning how to tint a body with a primary and secondary color and then how to save and load the exact same sprite sheet. There were 4 quick tips this month, these are very short videos containing some useful tip you might not know. First covering the concept of magic numbers and how you should keep your code free from them. Every number in your code should be clear as to what it means, so use local variables instead of just a random number. And then we covered the script execution order, which lets you set the order in which the scripts are run. So if you have two scripts, and both have code on their start methods, but you need to make sure one runs before the other, you can set that order in the script execution order window. Also covered how to keep your code clean with private variables, but still make them editable in the editor. If your variables are meant to be used only in one script, then they should really be private. If you need that private variable to be editable in the editor, you can add the serialized field attribute instead of making it public. That way your code is clean, but you can still edit certain variables in the editor. And then another quick tip on how to manually limit the frame rate for testing. This is essential to make sure your game will run correctly on any kind of hardware. There are several issues which may never happen when running on a high frame rate, but completely break your game when running on a low frame rate. So you need to make sure you test your game on any kind of scenario. We continued the tooltip series that started last month. This is a very useful UI element that is pretty much a requirement if your game is UI heavy. So we first created a tooltip warning. This is great for giving the player a warning message that is displayed right on the mouse. We created it by duplicating the tooltip so you can have both a tooltip and a warning visible at the same time. And finally we took our tooltip code and reworked it to make a simple item stats window. We added an image and several text fields, and by reusing the tooltip code, we created a very nice window very quickly. This shows you the importance of writing clear reusable code. If it's easy to adapt, you can quickly create something else you might need. There was a video covering a summary of the completed graph series. This is the longest series I've done, and if you're interested in creating a graph, go watch the playlist from start to finish. It starts off with a completely empty scene by first setting up the background and creating a very simple line graph. Then over the course of the series, the graph class is expanded and becomes more and more feature rich by supporting various visual types and options. And the last video covers the class built in the series being used in an actual commercial game in Battle Royale Tycoon. So you can pick up the game on Steam and see the class in action. Also a video on a really cool but simple UI element, a clock. If your game contains some in-game time variable, you can display it using this clock. 
It's a pretty simple element, but looks great and fits any kind of game. As long as you understand the basic math behind it and how to rotate the clock hands, you can display any time you want. So in this case, we showed hours and minutes, but you could also show minutes and seconds, days and months, whatever you need. And also a video continuing the 10 minute game series by adding base building. This series started off with a brackets challenge of trying to make a game in 10 minutes. So in the first video, we did something very similar to an RTS where we had two types of units fighting one another. Now the goal is to move it towards some sort of completed RTS game, something like Age of Empires. This series will continue in February after the other ongoing series are completed. So that was it for the month of January 2019. I hope you found the videos helpful and learned something along the way. If you have any questions regarding any of the videos, feel free to post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.